Hey guys, Erin here, and today we're going to be checking out 9 games that feature malls. I know, it's a weird topic, but I've also done a video about sunsets in video games, so you should kind of expect this from me at this point. Growing up in the 90s, I was lucky enough to get the final taste of classic mall culture. I'm not saying it was anywhere near as cool as 80s mall mania, but at least I got a taste of it. My childhood arcade was Aladdin's Castle, and it was actually open until I was in high school. One of my last memories of that place was playing DDR there on my 16th birthday. Maybe I spent too much time at the mall growing up but I wouldn't have it any other way. So when I started noticing mall settings in video games, I started thinking, hmm, what other games feature a mall? It makes sense malls would be featured in retro games because they were a huge part of American teen culture in the 80s and 90s. So over the past few years, I've been keeping track and today I present to you, mall games. So let's go to the mall. Number one, Dead Rising, a game that has the most detailed mall I've ever seen in a video game. Now this game was on everything. Xbox 360, PS3, even the Wii. I played it on Steam. You play as a photojournalist named Frank who's trapped in a mall full of zombies. You have to survive, take pictures, and enjoy the awesome mall aesthetics. This game was released in 2006 and man did they get the feel of a modern mall right. I was super impressed by all of the details. Every shop had a name, and you could go into pretty much every shop and look at the merchandise. One of my favorite details was when you go into the movie theater, because you see a poster for a Mega Man 2 movie and even a cardboard display. This game was made by Capcom, so I guess that's why they were allowed to do that. I also enjoyed what it looks like when you eat a food item for health, especially when you eat a pie or a baguette. <laughs> he looks like an idiot. You can explore most areas of the mall and even go into the bathrooms. That's because the stalls serve as your safe spot. The color scheme was spot on for a mid-2000s design, and they even had potted plants, plenty of wooden benches, and a fountain. But they aren't just there for decoration. You can use the plants and benches as weapons. It's awesome. I never thought I'd play a game where I'm picking up a mall bench and slapping a zombie with it. You also end up on the roof of the mall, the back offices, and the parking lot. I found myself spending more time staring at the details than killing the zombies, but I managed to get around okay. It makes me wish there was some kind of open world mall simulator. I highly recommend this one if you like survival horror games, zombies, and of course, malls. Number 2, Rugrats, Totally Angelica. In Rugrats, Totally Angelica for PS1, your hub world is a mall. That's because Angelica receives a Cynthia Mall playset, but she breaks it when trying to open it, being the spoiled brat that she is. Hey, it's broken! Those mailmen need to be more careful. So instead, she recruits the other babies and uses her imagination to put on a mall fashion show. Tommy helps narrate things and says very Tommy things. And remember, customers who aren't potty trained always shop for free. The mall looks like a mall, but the design is still very Rugrats. I love the different wallpapers you see throughout. It even has a fountain, so that made me happy. Each store has a different mini game you need to complete in order to get various clothes and accessories for your fashion show. And surprisingly, the mini games aren't completely terrible and I'm pretty sure they're using the actual voice actors from the show. In the pinball game, you need to get the ball of yarn to her cat, Fluffy. Lobby, go get your ball! Bobby! It's a pinball maze where you have to control the springs and you can even make the ball bounce at times. I appreciate that they even incorporated in some Reptar elements because you gotta have Reptar. In Cynthia's fashion match, you have to memorize the outfit that Angelica's doll Cynthia has on before it gets all jumbled up. When I won, I got to choose what kind of blush I wanted. So of course, I went with bright purple. Cookie Catch is a Rugrats version of Kaboom. I'll save you, and then I'll eat you. One of Stu Pickle's wacky inventions is a cookie tosser, and you have to catch them all without them hitting the floor. The more cookies you catch, the more points you win. I had to play some of these games multiple times in order to get enough points to get items for the fashion show. However, it looks like I still needed more to get a decent score from the judges. How can I not win? Look at me, I'm stunting! The judges being Grandpa and even Reptar. Why are they so hard on us? It's a freaking make-believe fashion show. Gosh. 
But anyway, this game isn't anything special, but I could see a young kid who's into the Rugrats maybe being into this. I've definitely played worse. Number three, Barbie on NES. Now this probably won't come as a surprise to anyone, but Barbie on NES totally features them all. The plot of the game is that Barbie starts to fall asleep and she thinks over everything she has to do tomorrow, including getting a new outfit at the mall. So naturally, we go into Barbie's dreamland and encounter a pretty bizarre and somewhat cryptic mall adventure. You have a charm bracelet in the lower left hand corner and each charm does something different. You throw a charm to get animals to do things for you. You know, the pets that hang out at the mall. First, you're in the sporting goods section and there's a tennis racket and ball blocking your path. So you give the puppy a charm and he takes care of that for you. I'll admit, I had no idea what the hell to do here at first. I guess giving a charm to a dog didn't naturally occur to me. Oh, and there's also two cans in the store as well. Barbie sure has some strange dreams. The color scheme is wonderfully 80s, with lots of pastel blues and neon pinks. When you enter the toy department, now kites and beach balls want you dead, so you gotta watch out for those. I wish there was actual merchandise in the background instead of the objects that want to hurt you. The first boss, I guess I'll call it, is great. Probably one of the most random bosses I've ever seen in a game. It's literally a trap door shooting balls at you. But luckily, the toy store cat is there to help you out. After that, you enter a boutique where more items try and hurt you until you make it to my favorite looking stage of the game, the Galleria. At least, I'm calling the stage that because that's where it says you are. I wonder if this has anything to do with the Glendale Galleria in LA. This stage is nothing but fountains. I miss elaborate mall fountains so much, so I'm really glad there's an obnoxious amount of them in Barbie's Nightmare Mall. These fountains even have fish in them, so watch out! This stage is surprisingly tedious as you need to be extra patient to not get hit by aggressive fountain water or rabid mall fish. I do like the visuals in this stage though, like the glossy pink floors, glass tiles, and potted plants. As weird as this game is, I did find it kind of addicting trying to get further and I totally appreciate Barbie's batshit crazy dreams. Especially the mermaid one, but that's not part of the mall so I won't talk about that. Number 4, Bart vs. the Space Mutants on NES. Many people who try out Bart vs. the Space Mutants never actually make it to the second stage because of the very specific way you have to get through the first level. But if you did, the second level takes place inside a mall. I appreciate the vibe of this place. Well, mostly just the blue tiles that remind me of my childhood mall, but still. You have to collect hats throughout the level and there's every kind of hat you can think of. They could have went the cheap way and just had two or three hats to collect, so I appreciate the variety. Each section ends with a mini boss and I don't know, he looks familiar but I can't place him. If you know who this character is, let me know in the comments. Anyway, after that it's up to the escalator to the next fight. The enemies in this stage are all various snack foods, I guess to imply that they are coming from the food court. No wonder there are so many sale signs up. This place is probably on the dead mall list now. This level has a notorious section where you have to jump on rotating lollipops. It takes some real platforming skill to get through this part because the controls are a little awkward. It's similar to the way Mario controls, but his momentum is harder to get a handle on. The end boss is a babysitter from a famous episode in season 1 called Some Enchanted Evening. She tosses down luggage at Bart, which I assume she stole from one of the stores because she was insane. Number 5. Zombies Ate My Neighbors Every Halloween season, this game pops up. Zombies Ate My Neighbors on Super Nintendo. It's a super fun, top-down, horror-themed game that features all of the ghostly creatures you'd hope it would. You need to save your neighbors from these monsters, and they've even taken over the town mall. Good thing I have my 3D glasses on! The mall level is called Terror in Isle 5, which I love. This zombie-infested mall features escalators, potted plants, department stores, and even mannequins. It gives me serious Dawn of the Dead vibes, and you even get to check out the back area of the mall. When you enter the grocery store, you meet one of the most annoying enemies of the whole game in my opinion. These little wannabe Chuckies. 
And yeah, some malls do have grocery stores attached, so this isn't all that weird. But anyway, back to the wannabe Chuckies. They chase you fast through the aisles and I totally hate it. I'm sure you've played it by now, but if you haven't, definitely check this game out because it's a Super Nintendo gem that's highly addicting. Number 6. Mary-Kate and Ashley Magical Mystery Mall Mary-Kate and Ashley were an unstoppable force in the 90s and early 2000s, so naturally they have a ton of video games. This PS1 game is the only game of theirs that I've played, and that's only because it's all about a mall. Mary-Kate and Ashley's Magical Mystery Mall, that is. The premise of this game is totally insane and not what I expected at all. I don't even know where to start. First off, this game is from Club Acclaim. Not just regular old Acclaim, so you know you're in for a treat. Club Acclaim was just Acclaim's kid division that started in the 90s, kind of like the Sega Club thing. The music is weirdly intense for the opening because it's just a montage of different cutscenes from the game. So it starts with Mary-Kate and Ashley checking out a new jewelry cart at the mall, and a friendship necklace that is missing gems catches their eye for some reason. There's a weird lady who sells it to them, whatever, and warns them not to put the pieces together. But of course, they do! And then everything gets dark and weird. It turns out it was cursed, and they're gonna be stuck in the mall forever. But they can break the curse if they go to different stores and compete in different mini games in return for gems. And then when they get the gems, they can put it back in the necklace and the curse will be broken. So before we get into the mini games, let's talk about the mall here. Just like in the Rugrats game, the mall serves as the hub world for this game. This game came out in the year 2000, and I gotta say that they did a good job of getting that depressing vibe of this era right. Everything is kind of dim, there's those annoying mall carts everywhere, and banners hanging from the ceiling. There's even vacant stores and a restroom that you can't go into. How authentic! Now when it comes to the games, these are all over the place. If you go into the surf shop, your goal is to take pictures of some boys without them noticing. No How creepy is that? that? Oh my god, this is gonna be so much fun. Where's the camera? And to make it even worse, at first they use an actual picture of real kids. Why? But when the game starts, they're digital. One twin walks in front of them, so when you're taking the picture, it's supposed to look like you're taking a picture of your twin and not the random boys. This mini game was probably the most awkward of them all. I first decided to try the fashion show, and maybe that was a mistake because I lost pretty hard. I think it had something to do with giving Ashley crimped hair. If you go into the snow shop, you have to have a snowboarding race. I had a hard time controlling this thing, and you can jump randomly. You have to collect snowflakes and make it through the markers in order to get points. There's another mini game where you have to make your own music video. This makes sense. If you were a tween girl in the Y2K era like I was, you would have loved to do this in real life. Cool. The dance moves I featured in this game one. were choreographed by America's I number one music video one. choreographer. What do you think? At least according to the cover of the game. They don't say who it was though. I hope it was the guy from Darren's dance moves. Remember those commercials? I do. Anyway, you pick your dance moves and then you just sit back and watch your performance. Seriously, I mean you pick the camera angles and the lasers and stuff afterwards, but that's it. Not much gameplay. When it comes to mall-based minigames, the Rugrats one totally blows this out of the water. I couldn't take any more of this one, so this right. is as far as I got. Number 7, Doom Eternal! Yes, there's a mall in a Doom game! I'm so happy! In Doom Eternal, you find yourself smack dab in the middle of a post-apocalyptic mall with crumbling parking structures, creepy holograms, the cleansing of Earth is a necessary step on the path to a brighter tomorrow and completely destroyed storefronts. Like, they're super destroyed. There's even a giant slug monster thing stuck in this one. And then this one over here reminds me of a sun coast. When I first played this last year, I wasn't totally sure if this qualified as a mall. There's stores with mannequins, but then there's also like a subway station. So I was like, okay, this is just a shopping center and a subway station. But then, 
You climb through the parking structure ruins and elevator shaft and enter what for sure is totally a mall. At least it seems that way to me. Want to see what it looks like when cockademons, imps, and soldiers have totally destroyed a food court? Then play Doom Eternal because it's great. The vibe of this mall features that soulless, white everything, sterile vibe that so many modern malls have. But even more soulless because in this universe, hell has completely taken over. So even though I'm not too good at it, I freaking love this game and I'm waiting on Bethesda to release an Arachnatron figure or plush already. My Kako Demon needs a friend, and I think the Arachnatrons are kinda cute. Number 8. Lizzie McGuire on the go! Lizzie McGuire premiered in 2001 and it was a big deal for the Disney Channel. Millennial girls like myself loved the show at the time, so of course games were made. Three games, in fact, but it's the first one, Lizzie McGuire on the go, that we're talking about today. There really isn't much going on with this Game Boy Advance game, but it heavily features a mall, so I gotta talk about it. This is a very basic Y2K image of a mall with Zoog Disney colors everywhere. Yeah, remember Zoog Disney? That was awesome. You only know you're in a mall because of the escalators, shadows of mannequins in the windows of what appear to be storefronts, and a picture of a pizza and burger indicating a food court. You collect things like CDs, shoes, and pizza. I mean, I have memories of being a tween at the mall. You know, you go to Sam Goody, you get yourself an overpriced CD, and then you get hungry, so you go to Sabaro and get a slice of pizza. So I guess it's pretty accurate. You have to make sure to collect every item while also watching out for cheerleaders. There really isn't much to say about this one, but I had to include it. But if you want to hear more, I totally made a Lizzie McGuire video, so check that out. Number 9, Jay and Silent Bob Mall Brawl. Jay and Silent Bob Mall Brawl came out last year, and it's an 8 bit style beat em up that I wish I enjoyed more than I did, but that's not the point. It does take place in a mall, hence the title, and features some mall necessities like trash cans, planters, stores with funny names, and of course, Jay and Silent Bob. I do like the red tile detailing that was so reminiscent of malls in the 90s. You have to escape security as this takes place after the ending of Mallrats, where they sabotage the Truth or Date game show. At least I think that's what happens. It's been a while since I've seen Mallrats. I'm gonna be real. You can switch between Jay or Silent Bob as you fight your way back to the quick stop. Clerks is one of my favorite movies, and I wish I had more to say about this one, but I don't. It's pretty basic, and I'd rather play Double Dragon 2 in all honesty. But, you know, that's just my opinion, so if you like it, that's totally okay. So there you have it, my list of 9 games that feature a mall. Can you think of any games that I missed? You're probably thinking about Beavis and Butthead or Space Quest, right? <laughs> well, let me know in the comments if there's any others, and thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again soon. Bye!